The CTA lead is responsible for proposing on behalf of the entire CTA. So some member out there doesn't have to worry about submitting their own proposal. You're permitted to, it's outlined in the solicitation that you, you know, did this for a reason. We don't want to restrict you too much that you're permitted to be a CTA member on multiple teams, a, you're permitted to propose on your own and be eligible for group B, or if you're an AA, group B and group C task orders. You're permitted to subcontract for whoever you want to subcontract for, but be aware that there may be organizational conflict of interest that come with the arrangements that, and the agreements that you uh, come into with other companies. And we'll talk about that you know, a few slides down. Oh, this slide. Who put these together? It was Christian. The power of delegation. So, Potential OCIs. Potential OCIs may exist in accordance with FAR 9.505. The OCI language is in section H.4 of the RFP. The language applies to both the IDIQ and task orders. We expect it certainly on task orders. You know, one of the frequently asked questions that came in were, does it apply to me for the IDIQ? I do this kind of work. You tell us what potential or existing OCI exists at the IDIQ level that you need to disclose to the government. Did you, did you put the, are you Yakabachi Inc. and you put the solicitation together? You're not, you're not going to be a part of JETS, but are you Kerpeel Wakamiya Inc., who got subcontracted 99% of that solicitation? You're not going to be a part of JETS, possibly. We'll review it. But other than that, I don't know of what all the contractors are doing here at DLA. We don't, from my contracting point of view, I don't know of a certain contractors out there that helped out in a way for JETS that will exclude them from at least getting an award in certain task areas. I don't know that up front. I'm not saying, hey, we're not going to kick someone out because they have a competitive advantage. It's just I don't know about it. And that's the key. We're talking about competitive advantage here. We're talking about do you know something because of the prior work that you've had, an existing contract that you have, or do you potentially know something? Do you think it, it may come up based on the work that you have? Or you think, hey, I did this. This could be a potential OCI. If that's the case, disclose it to us at the IDIQ level. If it applies to JETS, and more importantly, at the task order level. Because in certain cases, it will apply at the task order level. We're not going to award a contract or a task order until we determine the conflict of interest has been resolved. In some cases, it may be too late. You may have received, you may have gotten insight, you may have that competitive advantage now. And for that, it is too late. This applies to your team members, your partners, your subcontractors of the prime offer. So you might think, hey, I'm the prime offer. I wasn't involved in that. But the way we have this designed, your team members are permitted to subcontract with whoever they want. They may be subcontracting with XYZ Inc. And XYZ Inc. had the previous or the current contractor or the previous contract that now that subcontractor has gained that insight, gained that competitive edge, and 
may be using it on your team. You have to disclose that. Know what your partners are doing. Know what your subcontractors are doing. Be aware of it. Have them disclose it to you. Um, you must disclose it to us. If we find it out, usually we find it out, it's, it's too late. Be upfront, be, be diligent, be on top of all of your teaming arrangements, all of your partners. This is very, very important, extremely important. Hopefully I made my Office of Counsel proud with that. They probably could have done a better job. I know. <laughs> so we're competing individual task orders. As I stated before, we're going through the regular DD 2579 process that any open market acquisition has. So Ms. Rosita Carousel here will coordinate with her office and will say, we have this requirement. Me as the KO, me as the specialist, we'll use our own knowledge. We'll, we'll recommend small business set aside. We know this. We'll, we'll recommend that this could be an 8A sole source. We know XYZ has the capability to handle this. She'll review it. She's got more expertise than I do. She'll approve us to proceed. She'll kick it back and tell us, you know, where we went wrong. No, this isn't a small business set aside. You have this confused with maybe this requirement. This is appropriate for unrestricted. Or, you know, maybe she points out it's part of the 8A program. We want to keep, obviously, we're going to keep everything in the 8A program uh, when appropriate and designate others for the 8A program, if appropriate. Our RFQs will be sent through email. We already set up that HQ Jets email address. So that'll be post-award. That'll be the mailbox that all the offers come in at. Mail that, or email that. We're all linked up to it. We can get the, get the offers. Task orders will be awarded to the best value, and that could be LPTA. Considering the effort we're putting forth to evaluate technical expertise and technical merit, past performance, all that goes into the IDIQ awards, we expect a large portion of them to be LPTA. But given the complexity of the requirement, we reserve the right to use trade-off. And that trade-off could be key personnel, technical merit, even a management approach of some sort scaled down, or any other, et cetera. We're gonna look at the level of effort, as I stated a few times already, to make sure the prices proposed are fair and reasonable, and the effort, the labor mix is appropriate and reasonable for the requirement we're soliciting. And we're also going to check to make sure that rate table isn't exceeded. Don't exceed the rate table, or I will take your hot dog back somehow. I'll figure out a way. So some restrictions. Small businesses and 8A holders, you're not permitted to compete in task orders that contain task areas that they, they, they or you did not propose at the IDIQ level. So we have a requirement. It's for 12, 13, and 14 in addition to 10. Well, at the IDIQ level, you proposed 10, 12, and 13, but you didn't propose 14. You have to be able to handle 
the requirement in its entirety. We'll ensure that we have adequate competition at the task order level. We're certainly open to, you know, at that time, recommendations. You can voice your concerns. Well, we think this maybe is appropriate for our task area, or why don't you break it out? You probably won't accept that recommendation, but we're open to it. And we may. We may. Hey, you look at the task order project manager. We removed it. We realize we're being a little unreasonable there. We're expecting too much. If that happens, I know I'm government, your industry. When these are awarded, I'm still government, you're still industry, but my agency has objectives. We want to make sure those objectives are reached, but I want to work with you to make sure the objectives are reached and that we have a team that could meet those objectives. You're getting everything you need as an IDIQ holder also. So this is post-award, CTA task orders. We anticipate having 40% allocation for each task order requiring a CTA. Keyword, anticipate. I told you there are a number of existing requirements out there now that have CTAs. We're going to state the specific percentage that's required for each individual task order. So we may have an unrestricted task order out there right now that doesn't even have a CTA. Maybe at the task order level, we think small business team members can handle 10% of that. We will increase it to maybe 10%, and it won't be 100% you know, unrestricted. We most likely will maintain, at minimum, the historical CTA that as it currently exists. So if a requirement's out there, it's 40%, it's probably not going to go under 40%. If it's 35%, it's probably not going to go under 35%. That's where you will be held to a CTA requirement. In the IDIQ level, we want to see a plan. We want to make sure you have a plan in place. You're aware that there's going to be CTA requirements. The IDIQ level is where we want to see that plan in effect. We want to see that if we require 30%, well, you're allocating it. We're issuing four, three, four task orders, depending on how many members you're using. And that's where you're being held to the percentage that we dictate. The CTA is required for quote, quoting on behalf of the entire CTA. So a CTA member can't just come in and say, I want to quote on behalf of my CTA. It's, go through the CTA lead. I guess this is a good time to discuss a few other things. Um, so we, we, we mentioned how you can be an IDIQ holder on multiple CTAs and on your own. So we get that there's some proprietary information in those rates. So you know, one of the interesting things we're doing is we're only issuing one IDIQ. That IDIQ is the vehicle. It's what we're going to use to issue an order off of it regardless of who that order or what kind of arrangement that order comes from. So because there is, there may be differing labor rates depending on which CTA you're on and your own rates for your IDIQ, we'll be sure to only disclose those rates to the IDIQ holder. So the IDIQ will be sent directly to the IDIQ holder so that, you know, we're not going through all of your CTA members so they could see all of your different CT or your CTA lead so they could see all your different CTA member rates or your own rates. 
All right, back to where I was. Each CTA member, because it's your own IDIQ, you're responsible for invoicing. So we have our e-procurement system, we set it up, post goods receipts, invoices, because each purchase order will be issued directly off your CTA. Your, it's your cage code um, that must come in and invoice for that, that payment. And it'll be laid out in the task order. You'll know when the CTA lead proposes what tasks are going to be allocated. You'll get your own task order. You know, maybe it's a total of $100,000, 30% CTA, so 70% goes to the lead, $70,000. It's broken down for convenience. We're going to just make 15% to two guys. Those two companies are going to invoice for their own 15% portion separately. The invoicing instructions will be laid out in the task order. Each CTA will receive a rating for performance shared amongst the CTA lead and members for that task order. So obviously CTA consists of five members, but only three of them performed on the task order. Well, company four and five that weren't involved, we're not going to rate you on performance of that task order. But one, two, and three, you get you have your own task order requirements, but you're a CTA, we expect that, we expect the performance is satisfactory, but you're in this together, we expect you to work together, and you'll share that performance rating accordingly. Some more restrictions. Awardees that received IDIQ contracts pertaining only to their CTA are not eligible to compete independently from the CTA. So you're just a CTA member. You don't have your own IDIQ. You can't compete in group B and group C. You have to come in. We have to evaluate you on your own, your minimum of eight, you know, task area 10 and seven others, task areas. We have to, you have to go through that evaluation at the IDIQ level. I get members are going through an evaluation at the IDIQ level, but it's not the same evaluation as IDIQ holders that are permitted to compete in group B and C. So we just want to make that clear that any company that's just going to be a CTA member, you're, you're going to get task orders, but it'll only be through a CTA arrangement if your team you know, is successful during a task order competition. The JET's ordering process. It's kind of in, included this. I like, I like the way it flows. It's probably one of those unnecessary graphics that I was talking about, but I wanted to put it in. But you know, so this is the way it works. We're, you know, our customer is going to submit an IGC, a PWS. We're going to make sure it's within scope. The core is going to email it to me. I'm going to make sure it's in scope. Before I, you know, we skip a few steps. The slide's only so big. Um, before we solicit, we will coordinate with Ms. Carousella. She'll be happy to hear that. She will, wants to make sure we're on top of things. And we'll develop the RFQ, and we'll, sol we'll solicit the task order. Offers come in through the DCSO JETS offer mailbox. We're, we're going to review them. We're going to make our award decision based on the criteria set forth in that RFQ. We'll generate our e-procurement purchase order, and we'll, we'll notify all the successful or the 
these successful and unsuccessful offers via email. Um, contractor will be in uh, performance, will monitor the performance, and assess it in accordance with the performance metrics. You'll invoice, we'll approve the invoice, and everyone's happy. We got the service we were looking for. You got paid at the agreed upon price. Unless you're late or your quality's not up to standards, see the performance metrics on previous slide. Planned amendments. Amendment 01, or 1, was issued on July 15th. Our planned amendment 2, we anticipate issuing on August 4th, which is Tuesday. Anticipate the keyword. But we've already, we've gotten the questions. We know what's wrong. We know that in Schedule B, we don't really say it's for informational purposes. Strike that. We don't, or we add it. We strike the task order project manager. We have some language in there about uncompensated overtime, which really doesn't apply to a ceiling rate. Gone. Um, and other inconsistencies. We'll make it clear you're another in small business, three volumes. You're a small business, you're an 8A, two volumes. Pretty much any, anything I discussed, with the exception of the hot dogs, will be in that amendment. Amendment 3, we anticipate issuing on August 10th, and that's going to address the frequently asked, or the FAQs. We're going to try to get as many of those 1,200 questions addressed in a timely manner. It's 1,200, but you know what? There was 100 on how many awards we're going to make. You already know that. It's best value. Whichever offers are the best value, we will make awards to. We also received a lot of questions. I guess I didn't address this in the submission requirements, but now's a good time. There are no page limits. I, I, I think I woke up in the middle of the night on Saturday night because I was going through them on the weekend and I just blurted that out. So I know we put in that recommendation, hey, we think you could do this in 100. 100 pages. Come on, 100 pages. We don't want anything that's lengthy, we don't want a million pages, a thousand pages, but we want you to put forth the offer you think addresses what we're asking for. So do that in the best way possible, but don't go overboard. So, you know, once again, now we're we're back to the FAQs. That'll be addressed in the FAQ, but just to make it clear, there, there are no page limits. Uh, we'll get all the big ones out right away. Uh, we may have a few that are left over. We want to make sure the answer's right. It reflects exactly what we want, exactly what we need. And we'll get those remaining questions out August 18th, which also will incorporate any questions that have come since the, the uh, question deadline for the pre-proposal conference. I know originally that statement was, hey, if you want your question addressed here at the proposal conference, submit it by the 22nd. And then I got the submissions, and I was thinking, wow, that's not going to happen. <laughs> But hopefully we addressed your main concerns, some of the big ones. I know there's some left over. We'll get to them. Uh, we want to work with you. We want to make sure that you're as informed as you can be. 
in submitting this offer. I understand this is extremely important to each one of your companies. It's extremely important to me and my agency, and we want to make sure that it's right and it's appropriate for everyone involved and fair for everyone involved. Backtrack just a little bit. We're going we're gonna to get the 80%, don't quote me on it, solution out in this First Amendment. There may be, or even 90%, there may be some other RFP revisions that we want to take our time with. Not insane amount of time, but we need to really make sure the language is correct. It's not just a simple, hey, delete, hey, we want to clarify it's three volumes, not two volumes. Those revisions will come out on anticipated August 13th. We said we're going to make our best efforts. Joe will hold me to it. So will Bill, Bill McClanahan, my, my direct supervisor. Um, they'll hold me to it. I'll delegate it all to Christian, but we're going to do our best to get it out. And with that, I also want to point out that we've, done, we've, we've tried to do our best to communicate with industry. It's, I've been working on this since 2012. I was on the other side of 30, wasn't married, didn't have a kid, now I've both, and uh, I'm on the other side of 30. And it's been a long time. A number of you out there have emailed me several times. Until the solicitation came out, I felt like it was in my best interest and in the best interest of the government to not share information with one guy when I picked up my phone, one woman when I picked up my phone, an email here, an email there. Felt like it was in the best interest of the entire industry to wait until we had our ducks in a row as the government and we had our information right before we sent something out. And that's why I didn't want to tell so-and-so when they called me up that, oh, we expect it out in December of 2013 because so-and-so would have been really upset in March 2014 when we were three months late and then even more upset in July of 2015 when it's a year and a half later. So that goes forward with questions that are coming in. Christian and I, we got two, if you look around the room, the millions streaming across the world and country, there's a, a lot of you out there, a lot of questions coming in. We'll do our best to keep the lines of communication open, but it's just the two of us. And Christian's doing all the work. So we've decided that in most cases, we're going to keep the open lines of communication through Fed biz ops. So August 4th comes, and the Office of Counsel isn't my best friend anymore. Got, we have some issues. We want to we wanna hold off on issuing that amendment on August 4th. We'll post something to Fed biz ops like we did with the slides, like we let you know that Unfortunately, capacity was reached, but we're streaming it. That's how we're going to communicate to you. That's how everyone gets the same information at the same time. Treat it like your Facebook, like your Twitter. Check it often, and that's how you keep on top of what we're going to communicate to you. That's the same with any other amendment going forward. If questions don't come out, we'll, we'll issue something to Fed Biz Ops and let you know that there's been a delay. I think that's fair. And I hope you know you appreciate that we're trying to keep everyone on the same you know level playing field and that you're uh, you're all getting the same information at the same time as long as you're checking Fed biz ops. All right, questions. How do I do? And I don't know if uh, yeah, go forward.
make decisions. So we're going to take about a 20 minute break. Um, if you have questions that you want to submit in writing, you may. There's index cards available in the back of the room um, for you to write those questions down. I would suggest that if, you're, if you have a question that's technical in nature, please write it down and submit it to us because the, during the question and answer session, if you ask that question, Mike and I ain't going to be able to answer it. So that will give us time during the break to check with some of our experts who may be able to answer it. We'll try and answer as many questions as we can. If there's a question that's, that we just can't answer today, we'll take that back and that will be published as part of the amendment. Um, one of the things that I, I do ask is if you've submitted a question in writing already, that's going to be answered via amendment. So please don't ask that again today because we will be taking the questions that we have and compiling them with the over 1,000 questions we've already received. Um, and, so, and again, anything we don't answer today will be answered via amendment. So, you all want to take about 20 minutes. The cafeteria is right out here. Anyone who wants to get a drink or a coffee. Um, the bathrooms are down to the right. And we'll get started again at about quarter after 11. <laughs>